Hello everyone, it's Dawn here from Dawn's Inspirations. Wanted to share another quick uh, mini album with you. Today we're going to make uh, this decorative box and inside it houses a nice little mini album. So I'm calling this mini album Scrap in a Box mini album. Purely because as you can see if we open up the gift box, out pops two photo mat mini albums. So you've got one this side, this will house four and three on there and the same again on the other side. So I'm going to make the album with you and the box and then I'm also going to show you a different way of putting just one mini album in the middle. So this one is with the dual one and then I'm going to show you in the next one how we do just one album in the middle. So this is why I'm calling it the Scrap in a Box mini album. So I'll just tie this up together and then we can get started. For this um, mini album project you're going to need one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock and about, I think I worked it out to six to seven sheets of, I've used six by six um, papers here. I've used the um, Spring Fest by um, First Edition. So I've just used um, some 6x6 six six papers out of here, um, but you can use 12x12 12 12 papers, but just I wanted to use this pad again because I like the papers, and also it's easier to cut down because each cube is going to be just over, just under 3, three inches by 3 inches square, so to use the 6x6 six six papers is a great way of using up um, these little paper pads. So I get started. So I'll pop this to one side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a sheet of um, 12 by 12 cardstock. Pick some cardstock that actually matches the papers that you're going to use. I'm using a light green here. This is just normal Basil Basics cardstock, nothing special. And then I'm going to cut this so it measures 6 inches by 12 inches. So I've got a sheet of that that measures 6 by 12 and then with the other piece I want to measure it so I've got two strips of 3 inches by 12 inches. So you've got those and then you've got your main piece. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our score pal and then with these long strips we're going to put them in the score pal and we're going to score these at 3 inches, 6 inches and 9 inches. Now if you know me, if you follow me, I always tend to flip my cardstock and score both sides. Um, paper is uh, has a memory and it's made flat and by scoring both sides you're breaking the memory down of the paper so when we come to fold um, the score lines then um, you won't get the cracking in your paper stock your card stock so a lot a lot of people say they get their card cracks or their paper cracks but if you just do it lightly on both sides you don't get that um, cracking in your card or paper stock so that's those two so we're going to put those aside because that's for the inside of our mini album so I'll pop those to one side for a minute get the next one now and if you put it with your long side the 12 inch side at the top of your um, score pal okay I'm going to score this at one and a half inches I do tend to work in inches being a scrapbooker so I do apologize for any of you that are working in metric so we've done one and a half inches we're now going to do four and a half inches seven and a half inches and ten and a half inches. I'm going to flip over again and do the same on the other side just to break the fibres down in the paper. If you notice when I'm scoring I'm using the flat part of the score um, scoring tool as well. If you tend to dig in with the point that's another way that you do get your paper that tears and cracks. So I'm satisfied I've done those both ways now I'm going to do a quarter turn so we've got the short side now at the top of the board and we're now going to score this at one and a half inches right the way down and four and a half inches I'm 
I'm going to flip it again and do the same on the other side. Okay, and when we're happy with that, I'm going to bring my mat back in then. And we're just going to burnish these folds. So just take your time to burnish your folds on the paper. And as you can see by scoring both sides, I'm not getting any cracking on the crease of my um, score lines. Just take your time to burnish all your score lines. the ones that are long ways that one okay so now your paper will have all its score lines um, burnished and folded and then with the pair of scissors we're going to just do a few cuts okay so the first thing we're going to do is on this end one here both ends that come up like this I want you just to cut down to the first score line so just with your scissors I can't see if you're in camera shot that's it so just score just cut down to the first score line just on the that score line itself okay and then I'm going to turn it around I'm going to do the same on the other end okay I'm happy with that and then we're going to do some more cutting going to cut these two squares out here on the side so if I cut one out I can show you again I'm going to the first score line I'm going to twizzle it round going to the second one there so you're going to have a piece that looks like that well, we're going to now cut these two little pieces away okay piece to be a bit ambidextrous here but I'm just trying to show you in the easiest possible way to do this discard those to one side so now you'll have your piece of paper that is looking like this so you've got your cut line up here and we've cut away this middle piece here as well so now we're going to glue these ends to make the ends of our box so if you pop your two little flaps down first I'm just going to use a tape runner today for quickness you can use adhesive of your choice if you want to use wet glue double sided tape it's entirely your choice but all I'm doing is putting some with a tape runner here just on those two squares and then I'm going to bring that up at a right angle and join it with the end tab so by doing that you have the start of your box okay so we do the same again on the other side so with my tape runner do get a bit temperamental these tape runners okay and then I'm going to do the same again I'm going to bring it up at a right angle and make the box so now when we fold that together you now have your box shape okay a little bit of glue there on the side I'll just get rid of that I notice there's a little bit I've not quite 
got that at the right angle so I've got a tape bit there I'm just going to trim that off right, so that's the start of our box so now we can go ahead and start decorating our box so for this you're going to need obviously six sheets or six little squares of pattern paper now each of these squares is measuring three inches by three inches so you need to cut them just a little bit shorter than three inches by three inches I've gone ahead and already pre-cut mine to save time so if you wanted to pause the video at this stage while you go away and cut your six squares you can do okay so these are my my six squares I've got three that I've left totally whole and three that I've gone ahead and I've cut in half and the reason that we've cut them in half is obviously on these sides we've got to be able to open up okay so let's go ahead and stick the plain ones down first I think so I'm just going to get my tape round and what I've also done with these I've rounded off my edges just with my corner rounder personal preference again if you don't have a corner rounder do not worry you don't have to but if you look as I lay them onto the the box you've just got a tiny little gap all the way around the edge because this measures three by three you don't have to cut your mats a little bit shorter it's personal choice but I think it looks um, aesthetically better if you have a look by having a little bit of a space around there so we'll go ahead and get these stuck down I'm just going to use my tape runner again just for quickness so I get these three already taped up I haven't got any tape on that corner I noticed And I'm going to position this on there. I got this idea from a little ring box that I've got, and I'm sorting out my jewellery. And it's a little ring box, and it's got a like um, a fastening here that you open up, and the ring is in the bottom in a cushion. So that's where I've got the I the idea from. I mean, I'm sure people out there have already perhaps come up with the idea from different boxes that you get on the market but that's where I came up with my idea from was the a ring box in my jewellery box so I'm putting these three on here okay and then when I'm happy with where they are I'm going to lay it down and just push down so they're glued nicely because the paper I'm using on the outside of this box has got an embossed raised effect with embossing on it so I'm just wanted to make sure it's stuck properly and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick um, the ones we've cut in half now what I've done if you look is I've kept my halves together so when I stick them the patterns match up so it's a little top tip to think about okay so we'll just start with doing one at a time so I don't get in a muddle with my patterns tape runner I'm using here today this is um, Crafters Companion I know a lot of my followers do ask what products I use and I use, like this one because um, it is very sticky so you get a nice good um, adhesion with the when you're sticking something down so I'm just sticking that one on that side just make sure the patterns match and then I can bring this together it's a little bit fingers and thumbs until we get the ribbon on but it is just worth doing you could try and do it um, laying flat before you stuck everything together but then I find sometimes I get in a bit in a muddle so um, it's the way I found it works best so I'll just check this one goes together yeah so put some tape on this one as well Uh 
Ага. Trying to match it up because the box won't stay together at the moment. down and the last one's on the top which is going to be harder to do so just take your time with this if I'm going a bit faster than you are you can always just pause the video and restart it when you've got up to where you want to be okay I'll do the top one As I say, you can use any glue that you feel happy to use. So I'm just joining the box together now as if it was closed. If you didn't want to put a mini album in this, you could always just use it as a decorative box for, for gifts, for Christmas or birthdays, you know, things like that. It just makes a quite a nice little gift that somebody can open it up and your present is there. So that's now all together. So we now go ahead and put our ribbon on. I'll show you how we do this. I'm just using, this is some American Crafts ribbon. Uh, if I can get into it. Um, the length on this spool is about four metres. And I'm just going to use just under that. So, um, not four metres, sorry, four feet. So this is some American craft ribbon, it's four feet, and this is a nice shiny ribbon that I'm using here today. So I'm just going to use under the four feet, but just so you want to know for quantities wise. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and we're going to join um, the piece that goes around the sides. So the way I do that, I'm going to use some red line uh, or red double-sided tape for this because it's stronger. And then on one side of the box, I'm going to turn it around towards me, I'm going to literally go right up to the edge. So I'll stick the tape down first so you can see where I'm putting it. So I'm bringing it right to the edge of the, um, the side of the box. So we're doing it as if we were doing a parcel. So this then will make it look crisscross. So we're just bringing this all the way around only down to this first piece and I'll show you why okay I'm just going to trim that off there just get my scissors I do tend to use different scissors for the red tape because they do get sticky so then just with your finger just make sure that's all stuck down first okay and then we're going to go ahead and stick our ribbon down what I find is best to do is to take your red tape off first and it's best to take all of it off first because it uh, is so sticky and the um, top binding just doesn't seem to want to go because it's a plastic coat and it doesn't stay put so I tend to take the whole thing off and get it out of the way and then I'm going to get the end of my tape okay and then I'm just going to go and stick right on to the edge so stick it down like that right to the edge and bring it round going right to the edge again and then bringing it down and going right to the edge so that's what you should have left then with your scissors you can just trim off that end okay and then what we'll do is, as the box then closes, we now need to match up the piece at the bottom here. So get your tape again. And just try and your best, just to try and match it up, just so it looks like a parcel when we finish the project. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to smooth that down and trim that off. side. So I'm just 
going to smooth that off and then we'll take the backing off and stick a piece of ribbon underneath here. As I say, we're making this look like a parcel that's been wrapped up with ribbon, but at the end of the day, it's just the the, um, the last bits that are attached. Let's get your ribbon again. Hold it onto there. Stick it across. And then cut that off. So as you can see when the box is closed it sort of matches up so it just makes it look nice. Now I need to do the ribbon to go around the other way. So yet again get your, your red tape which now got stuck to my uh, glue runner. Now I'm going roughly um, halfway. I'm, I'm just eyeballing this. You can measure it if you want. Now when you stick the tape to the top you don't want to go all the way across the top because we're going to put the rib tie bow. So I'm just going to start a little bit from the edge. So I'm going to start about there and then I'm going to run it all the way around as if we were doing a parcel. Okay. All the way around that way back down to there and then I'm going to trim a little bit off and let that come down okay and then I'm just going to go along with my fingers make sure the tape stuck down as I say because the paper I'm using has got um, texture and embossing on it that's why I'm using the red tape and also the ribbon I'm using has got a bit of a glitter to it as well okay and we can go ahead and stick our ribbon. Now what I tend to find is easier for this is if you get a length of ribbon and then you can just judge roughly how much room you need for your bow. Sometimes it's better to just be overestimate rather than underestimate. So I'm just tying it to see where roughly I'm going to go about there. So just take your time with this. And then what I'll do then is get my ribbon the length up of cut. So you've got the roughly the halfway point, and the halfway point is going to start on your halfway point here. So if you just remember where that is, so I'm just going to lay that there with my scissors on. And we're now going to take all the red tape off again. to come off. It's being very sticky and stubborn. Oh, it doesn't want to come off today. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to put all of that all the way off. Okay, and take that out of the way because it tends to stick to everything. So this is my halfway point of my ribbon. So I'm now going to pop that onto there. Just take your time with this. And I'm going to do one side at a time. So just laying it flat. And then bringing it round. And sticking it down. And do the same again with the other side. So bring it across. And round. And then just take your time to make sure it's properly stuck down. Okay, so that's now your box. You just tie that up. So that's now your decorative box all done. So now we need to put the photo album inside. Okay, so just put that to one side. Now you had your two strips of paper that we had um, 12 by 3 and we did the score lines so we're now going to burnish these score lines now as I mentioned to you in the beginning um, the album I showed you originally had two um, photo pullouts or they are like little springs really that's why I've called it a, a scrap in a box so um, 
so with this one we're going to do just with the one so it shows you that you can do the same idea same measurements so there again we're losing very little materials um, but you can have it either way you can do two, two different styles so it's entirely up to you okay so I'm just going to go ahead and burnish these I'm doing valley and mountain folds like concertina or accordion folds whatever you wish to call them Just take your time to make sure everything's lined up and you've got a good burnish on your scores. As you can see I've got no cracking on the paper at all because we've done that double piece of scoring so that's a good top tip. So on this album we're going to have it, the album pull out from the middle. Okay, so this piece is going to be attached to the bottom of your album but then we need to attach this piece to this piece. And the way we do that is literally we're going to slot one into the other so you've got one long accordion okay so if I lay it on this side you can see it like that so we need to now glue these two together so I'm going to put a little bit of tape use the tape runner again I'm going to on here put some double sided tape try and go right to the edges because you don't want it to be seen and then with my other piece I'm going to line this up just take your time as I say with that and then that should all concertina up so you've got a little accordion album okay so now we can go ahead and put the photo or the pattern paper mats on here I've gone ahead and I've cut um, the pattern paper mats for this. Now if you're doing like the first album with the two um, pullouts, you will need 14 little squares of pattern paper that measure just under 3 inches by just under 3 inches. Okay, if you wanted to totally cover them, you can do them bang on 3 inches. I've done mine just under 3 inches by 3 inches and I've also rounded my edges again with my um, edge rounder, my corner rounder and I've also used some um, distress stain, this is um, crushed olive just round the edges to take that whiteness off. I've used the green because I'm using the green paper but obviously depending on what paper collection you're using a cardstock you will then use yours accordingly okay I might put a little tab on here as well just to pull out so I've got a little bit of the ribbon left so I'm going to trim this and this is exactly how I made the tab for the other one that we used as well just get a piece of red tape and I'm just going to stick a piece on there take off if it wants to come off in the lights today might ask that piece off so I'm going to just put that there and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put a little piece on this side just to make a little pull out tab um, for people to pull the album out when they want to have a look at it. don't have to do this it's entirely your choice but it's just these little finishing touches look quite nice um, when we're doing the album over there, might give that a bit more of a tab like that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start sticking our pattern paper in. So I'm going to lay it out this way to start with, and we can start getting the paper tape runner. I'm going to quickly add these, and then I'll show you how we add it to the album itself. I'm using a mixture here of some embossed paper and some plain paper so it's entirely your choice obviously if you're using a different paper collection that's absolutely fine if you wanted to go ahead and just use another layer of um, colour cardstock you don't have to use any pattern paper at all if you don't want to I'm going to move that one over, I'm not happy that that's 
quite over where I want to have it. That's it. And another pink one this side. So just take the time you put in these uh, down. I'm rushing here a bit today because uh, I'm just showing you how we put this together then you can go ahead and make your own I hope you're enjoying my tutorials I've had lots of lovely feedback from people um, that say they like to craft along with me and uh, I just hope I'm inspiring you all to have a go and to look at your paper collections slightly differently as well. I'm going to flip over now and I'm going to start sticking some on the other side here. A mixture of two colours here. As I say you don't use a lot of paper or cardstock at all for this project which is great so it's a great way of using up bits of kits you've got, even scrapbooking kits if you've got pieces of scrapbooking kits left. It's a great way of um, using them up and making some nice little gifts for people. As I say it makes an ideal uh, gift to give to somebody because it's like having a little present. Not very practical to put through the post but um, okay to give for Christmas or Mother's Day or Easter or something. So. As I say, you can just make it into a gift box on its own if you didn't want to put a little album in here. Tape on there. So as you can see it's coming together quite quickly. We're just concertina it up so I can see where I'm going to put my last one. So I'm going to stick it down that way. So my last one will go on here. So what I'm going to do is show you how we did it. I'm going to round my corners off with my corner punch. As I say I've cut my mats just under three inches square so they're not bang on three inches. And then with my ink I just literally go around the edges just to take that white edge off. Okay, so we can now go ahead and get this stuck into our album. So as I said, we're going to do this as the single one. So because we're doing this as the single one, we're going to stick it right down here in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to get my tape runner again. I'm putting lots of tape on this time because it's going to be pulled out and used. You could use your red line tape for this, wet glue, anything you wish really. I'm putting lots of glue on there. And then I'm just going to take my time to make sure I get it right in the square that's at the bottom of the box. I'll just pull that up because I haven't got that bang on square. Just take your time to do this. You won't be rushing quite as much as I am. I'm now pushing this down so we can get some a nice good purchase on the glue. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my last photo mat in there. Finish that off. I haven't put any on either side. You could leave that space for journaling if you wish, or you could put photo mats. It's entirely up to you. So this is how the album will work. So it pulls out quite nicely. So you've got lots of space for photographs or journaling. So this one is the middle one. And when we close it up, we tie the ribbon. fingers and thumbs today. Just get my ribbon. 
make a nice bow and there's your little gift box so it's your scrap in a box mini album so there's the two different styles so I'll just show you again this is the first one that I showed you where we open it up and you've got the two photo mats on each side so lots of space for photographs you've got um, 14 spaces on that one with both sides of that showing so that's your first one so we'll just do that one up so it makes a nice little gift um, great way of using up all your scraps as well so I'd love to see if you have a go if you do have a go please post me some pictures you can post them on my Facebook page Dawn's Inspirations and this is the one that I've just made with you just now and this is the one that opens up and you have your big photo album in here and there again you've got room in there for one two three four five six eight nine ten eleven fourteen fourteen photos in that one and then that just goes together nicely tie the bow and away you go and if I was giving this a gift I'd add a gift tag to the top just to let the re recipient know who it was from so that's my take on um, a scrapbook in a box mini. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and thanks very much for watching. I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations. Do pop over to my website or pop onto Facebook and leave me any comments or show me any of your pictures that you've done of the same project. So I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.